Okay, the next step will be to finish insulating the upper bays there, get some better pictures. And uh, you see here, always make sure the paper is facing the interior of the house and uh, not the outside. So paper always faces towards the inside. Another view of it there. First piece of drywall. And then, of course, we can start putting the drywall around here. Another view of that. Let's go back here. Give you an idea. And I, this, I don't think this is an optical illusion, but sometimes your framing isn't going to be perfectly straight. So um, that could be an optical illusion, but not saying that it is for sure. Corner bead on. And then we are ready to start putting plaster on. I'm pointing to, and I realize this isn't a big pic a good picture here, but there's a pretty big gap here. Um, I actually ripped the joist down to fit um, to be even with the two by six for the ceiling joist, and uh, it didn't uh, work out well. But you can almost see it right there. How how far off it is. Here's the wall where the arch is. And then this is going to take a lot of plaster, which we will see here in a few minutes. And uh, there it is. We have our tape. I used fiberglass tape for the edges. Can't really see it too good there. So I wouldn't need any tape where the corner bead was going to be filling in, but I would need tape on the corners, but I use paper tape here. I don't know if you can see, I like using paper tape for my corners, fiberglass tape for the edges. Now that was day one. This is the next morning and some of the stuff hasn't dried the thicker stuff, but uh, we're off to a nice start. Now I wanted to point out, I mentioned this earlier, but I had a, a water leak here and it was leaking in here. So I just knocked a hole in it so I could put a bucket underneath it. And you can see here where it is the drywall seam. And it's not uncommon to have water leak into a drywall seam. Think, think about it. It's the easiest spot, and then it will flow to another spot where it can leak out. And a lot of times that this is what happens. So I just knocked a hole there knowing that I was going to replace it or repair it later. But you can kind of see where it's a little darker. This stuff hasn't dried um, really over here. But there it is after I gooped on the next batch of goop. And... Uh, then I cut a piece. I use these. I got a video. I am going to put a make another video. I cut a little square out and then put the plywood on, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in this video. I already covered it up, but there is a, another video. I am going to try and put links in the right places where you can click on them. But if not, go to the website, go to the description box in the video. And each video, I'm going to have the, a link going back to all of the videos for this particular project in the video description box. So we can see here where I tape retaped it, the joint. Didn't think I needed to replace it. Look fine. I'm trying to not make a mess. I don't want to paint the green again, even though I think I did end up having to uh, to do it, but I'm not, not sure. It's uh, about... Uh, two months after I have done the original project, but try not to create more work for yourself if you don't have to. So we already saw that. Now I believe this is the next day. You can see where a lot of it has dried. And keep in mind that uh, the skylight, this area, the roof, this area gets warm. It's in July, Southern California, and uh, it's not taking too long for this stuff to to dry. So this looks like the next batch that I put on. And of course, this is the next day or the next couple of days. Again, I was just taking my time with this project. I think it took me about a month to do everything. And you can see where everything is dry. Another view of it there. And it is time to put the next layer of joint compound on. Not too worried about getting everything flat right now. So everything's looking pretty good there. Now that everything is dry, it's been a few more days 
starting to look a little flatter. I can go ahead and start putting some more joint compound on. Now, I just kind of wanted to show you this. If you have a tight spot like we do over the door jam, you can simply grab a piece of cardboard and fold it in half and, uh, and use it to create the corner that the larger trowel isn't going to fit over this door trim. So I just kind of used something like this. And I've been doing this for years and it works out fine. This isn't something you can keep in your truck. You use it once or you use it for about 15 minutes and you are done with it. It's going to be wet. So and you can buy smaller trowels. I'm just uh, if you're looking for a way to save some money then uh, the cardboard might work. But you can see here where the larger trowel just isn't going to fit. Working on the corner there, trying to get the corner straight. And another view of the top corner. And we are starting to texture. So obviously I have already sanded everything and uh, we are texturing. And this could have happened all in the same day. I guess it wouldn't have any patching I would have had to have done. So I probably have more of this in the video area. And again, I'm going to put some links here. See where I've sprayed the texture on it. And again, you just grab a flat trowel and knock all the ones off that are sticking up. Hopefully there's not too many sticking up. And I think I got it on a little heavy here, which meant that I was going to have to wait for this to dry and then respray it. Didn't work out too good there. View of the corner, the arch. And I, you know, you can cover all this stuff up too. I don't mind just washing it. A lot of times uh, this stuff is dirty. It's got dust on it. It needs to be cleaned. I just uh, clean it off. And it is now ready for paint. It looks like I have scraped all of the little boogers off that were sticking up. You can see everything looks nice here. Another view of it there. And it looks like we are now ready to paint.